my name is Dr. Kevin Parker. I'm a freelance ex-industry consultant specializing in chemicals and energy. Um, I've done a number of bits of work over the years with uh, both the universities of Edinburgh and Leicester working on context and problem-based learning materials. And I'm here today to talk about a game I have for inculcating good team performance, team building, if you like. It's called the five minute, 10 minute team game. So I think everyone agrees these days that team working is particularly important. So industry, NGOs, government, everyone places premium on team working skills. However, most PhD students, early career researchers tend to work in silos with only occasional team building sessions. But what, what do people do as team building? They tend to do slightly artificial team building activities let's let's build a tower out of um, dried spaghetti let's put marshmallows on top and those don't really reflect real life team interactions which is essentially period of solitary work in regular progress meetings so how does our game work we have designed something that is broken into work periods and meetings and like real project management it involves a multiplicity of tasks some of which are non-technical and real teams have to make ongoing financial decisions during the course of projects. So our game uses a budget sheet and monopoly money. What's the structure? We start off with a briefing meeting when we give teams of four to six people um, a series of tasks to do. There are five, six or seven tasks to do depending on the exact nature of the exercise. The teams uh, have a zero meeting uh, a briefing meeting to decide how they're going to allocate tasks and what happens is in the first work period each individual works on one specific task and they essentially don't communicate during that work period after 10 minutes we have a five minute meeting and during that meeting no one is actually allowed to work what we do have to do is to communicate with each other one of the things they'll decide is whether they need to shift resources. Do we need more, more than one person working on a particular task? Do we need help? Has anyone finished? Um, that causes them to reallocate their work for work period two, and they can carry on working on their individual tasks. And we repeat the process. So after 10 minutes, there's another meeting. Or oh, five minutes, no working on tasks. Or oh, another work period, um, 10 minutes, people working on separate tasks, another meeting. So here's our basic game. It's very, very loosely structured around the putative uh, photovoltaics company. Um, the tasks are designed to be non-technical and non-scientific, partly because when you're trying to inculcate uh, team behaviors and see people's natural tendencies, it's a good idea to take them away from a discipline that they're already trained in. So what sort of things going on here? Well, we have a putative uh, photovoltaics company, quite light sync. They're working on a complex series of tasks. All the tasks have to be completed in the shortest number of work periods. Um, so teams have resources which they can come and talk to the uh, course leaders and purchase typically for a specific time. And here are some of the tasks. So we're preparing materials or specification drawings for an important customer. We better air freight it. So what we're looking for is the final output of the game is a paper airplane with lots of other bits of paper inside it. Here's a complex piece of technical problem solving to resolve. Um, we've had inquiries from football clubs about installing our photovoltaic cells after that trade fair in Scotland. The trouble is we don't know where they are. So that's a research task. A marketing department want to display for a trade fair. They want to know all the words that can be made from the letters photovolt, which of course is the name of our company, our product. And in particular, we've had a phone call from a hotel who wants to talk, us, talk to us about our cells. Can we put photovoltaics on the hotels? They want the name on the cells. The name of their hotel, which is actually a real chain, is contained in some of the letters you see on the grid there. The big football team from Glasgow rang up. Can we make the photovoltaic cells the same color as their shirts? So we have, to, in order to do this task, we have to talk to the person doing the research in the football teams. Which is the team from Glasgow? Which is the big club? What color shirts do they have? And then we have ongoing costumes through the, through the, the whole game. Uh, one of the team members 
is recording costs and activities. They need to provide a data sheet with a list of what every team member is working on in every 10 minute period. Must have the total uh, cost of the project that should itemize the cost of each period. It is possible for the teams to get advice from the uh, game organizer, which will also cost them money as well. Advice on plane making. We can uh, check that their Sudoku in progress has, uh, is all right so far, which is important. And we can give them hints about the word search bubbles. All of these things need to be recorded in an activity sheet, and that's part of the deliverables for the project. Uh, how do we run the game? We use two people to run the game, one to brief uh, the, the teams and answer questions, and one doing what I might call administration. So that's handing out monopoly money and answers and things. Um, you have to be very strict about the no work in meetings and no communication during work periods. Um, we do have timers to time things, but we also use five minutes and 10 minutes chunks of music. Uh, think uh, Led Zeppelin or Mozart even, um, to help us time the periods. The music can get louder or faster, the periods progress if you want to do that. You can have unlimited resources where there are lots of blue pencils, or you can have restricted supplies where teams might have to wait to get the blue pencils back from another team at the end of a particular work period. As I've said before, four to six teams with four to six participants uh, works well in most uh, university and school settings. So what you'd like to know is, is, is this a good game? The students enjoy it. Yes, they generally do. We get good feedback. We have run this with um, high school students, um, secondary school students. We have run a version with primary school students in uh, scout groups. We've run this with first years uh, at university. We run it with PhD students. And generally we get, yes, that was fun. That was, uh, that was good. How real is this? Um, it is moderately real. Look up letters of credit transactions. It's also very, very similar to assessment center exercises, the kind of things that are used in recruitment, um, manager selection, officer selection for the services. 92% of respondents face some kind of group exercise like this as part of their assessment. Um, team building. You may or may not be familiar with the Belden team roles test. Um, these are the ways that people like to actually work when confronted with a team task the first time. So we have people called shapers who like to drive the team forward. Come on team, go this way. We have plants who like to come up with brilliant ideas. You have monitor evaluators who like to sort of be thoughtful and critique sometimes other people's ideas. You have resource investigators who like to find out things. Um, broadly, we try to design the tasks to fit in with certain Belden team roles, and this provides a useful amount of reflection and discussion after running the game. You can get students to do something like a Belden. It also introduces the concept of Gantt charts, which is something that uh, <clears throat> in an academics grant application, you need to be able to know what a Gantt chart is and produce one. And it introduces the concept of dependencies. A number of the tasks are, are linked together. You can't complete or start some tasks without uh, completing um, some of the earlier ones. In particular, the paper plane cannot be started right at the front because we don't know what's going to go in it. Um, and so all of these links between different tasks are called dependencies in the project management world. And we, we, talk, we talk about that. Um, we also have the ability to introduce the concept of direct costs, um, <clears throat> the costs of the people actually working on the project, and overhead costs of the costs of heating, lighting, insurance, uh, professor salaries, all that kind of thing, which again is something that we need to do in grant applications. We have designed a couple of specialist versions, one particular one for earth science PhDs, uh, in this version, it's based on real uh, expedition. Professor Simon Harley, a geology professor at the University of Edinburgh, has made a number of trips to the Antarctic, and the tasks involve basically going through what Simon would have to do to, to plan his trip. Um, we have a specialist version that we do with outdoor activities, camping and uh, outdoor teamwork. Um, here's someone who's fallen down a crevice, and at the bottom you can see someone who needs taking away on a stretcher. So if you're interested to try this game, you can download it. 
directory at um, this address here. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the game, um, to create new versions, to cooperate, get me to run a game for you, contact me at kevin at kkitech.com um, and I'll be happy to hear from you. Uh,